Okay, welcome back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to develop some important facts that you're going to need to know going forward uh, that's used um, in the uh, following in, uh, videos uh, for this section, also for the following chapter. Um, so we're going to start with the unit circle, and we're going to look at the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta. And so we're going to start with the unit circle to observe a couple of things. Okay. So again, on a unit circle, we know that sine theta represents this vertical uh, line segment that represents the y-coordinate of this point that's on the unit circle. So as you go around the unit circle, we know that sine theta bounces back and forth between 1 and negative 1. But in this case, what, we're really into, what we want to be interested in is we have this relationship with sine theta and also theta, okay? Because we know that in this coordinate, in this quadrant rather, we have theta that goes from 0 to power over 2. But we also have this arc length that also represents the radian measure of that arc length, which is also theta, the central angle, right? So when we have the central angle, we know that this arc length also is a measurement. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we see that um, for theta between 0 and power 2, we see that this vertical line segment here is always less than the arc length, which is also say theta. So we know that this line segment is going to be anywhere from 0, between, it's going to be between 0 and theta at all times. Okay, when theta goes from 0 to power 2, we know sine theta is going to be between 0 and theta. Okay, so that's where we want to start. So we are looking at 4. Oh, oh bless me. Okay. For theta between... Um, 0 and pi over 2. Okay, now why am I doing this? Because I want to look at what is happening to sine theta. As you approach 0, right, as theta approaches 0 from the right. Okay, so now so we know for theta in this quadrant, right, from 0 to pi over 2, we know that sine theta is between theta 0 and theta, based on what, way, what I just said. Okay, now, by the squeeze theorem, okay, so again, let's look at, um, we're going to start with from the right. Okay, so we're approaching 0 from the right, so we're in the first quadrant, so we know this is true. And then by the squeeze theorem, we see that the limit, since the, the limit as theta approaches 0 from the right of 0 is 0, and the limit as theta approaches 0 from the right of theta is also equal to 0, then we conclude that the limit uh, as theta approaches 0 from the right of sine theta also has to be 0 by the squeeze theorem. Okay, so now, that's one part of it, right? So now, what about from the left? Okay, so now we've just shown that the limit as theta approaches 0 from the right of sine theta is 0. Now, what if we look at this from the other side. So now we're going to approach 0 from this side. So we're going to go from the negative side. So since there really is no left or right, we're going to go negative and positive. So now, okay, so now we're looking at this, the fourth quadrant here. 
So if we're approaching, if we're trying to find this limit from the from the from the negative side, then what do we know? Then we know for um, theta. is between 0 and negative pi over 2. Okay? Because we're looking at the fourth quadrant. Now, so let's observe that for theta between 0 and negative pi over 2, what do we know? Well, if theta is between 0 and negative pi over 2, if we take the opposite, right, if we multiply it by negative, right, in other words, we're going to flip it across, right, So what do we get? That means that uh, negative power two is going to be greater than negative theta, which is going to be greater than zero. Okay. Which then tells us. Hence, sine of negative theta is going to be what? Between 0 and what? Negative theta. <coughs> But then, consequently, because of sine negative theta is the same as negative sine theta, we get um, negative theta is uh, greater than negative sine theta, which is greater than zero. So we get this is between zero and negative theta. And then if we multiply again, everything by negative 1, we get um, theta is less than sine theta, which is less than 0. Ah, which is right back where we started with before. <coughs> and so an application of the squeeze theorem produces the same result. And so the limit um, from the right, or from the left, so now if we apply the squeeze theorem here, we find that by the squeeze theorem, the limit as theta approaches 0 from the left of sine theta equals 0. And now we can apply what we know about limits since we've just shown that the right hand, the right side limit, the limit from the right of zero and the limit from the left of zero or the positive versus the negative side of zero of sine theta is equal to zero, then we know that the limit as x, or two, as theta approaches zero of sine theta is equal to zero. And that's the result we wanted. Okay? So we'll stop there and we'll continue on to the next part next time.